So it's been a while since I've uploaded a mock draft, but I figured that this was a good reason why. Cowboys are giving Dak Prescott a four-year, $160 million contract with a record-breaking $126 million guaranteed. Of course, the first three years averaged $42 million per year, according to Adam Schefter. And this is a huge, huge contract. But the thing is, Dak Prescott's probably worth it. This is about a top 10 quarterback. Of course, quarterback is the most important position in football by a mile. And the Cowboys got a pretty good one. So might as well pay him. Don't let him hit the open market. If the Cowboys lost Dak Prescott, man, the draft would be crazy. Free agency would be crazy because what are the Cowboys going to do? That would be a huge, huge position that they would need to address ASAP. Maybe the Cowboys would have moved up inside the top five. A bunch of different things could have happened, but it doesn't. Dak Prescott signs a big contract extension. Uh, and let's go ahead and get into the mock draft. Hit that subscribe button if you're new, by the way, for more mock drafts and a ton of content draft season. Uh, I'm super, super excited. I've been doing a lot of tape study and a lot of further research for the 2021 NFL draft so far, and I'm about ready to release my quarterbacks list. I usually spend the most time on quarterbacks because there's the most that goes into an evaluation. On that note, people always ask me where I get my tape. Uh, it's a private Google Drive that I'm in. You can't access it, unfortunately for you guys, so I do apologize, but I decided to do this in this video just because everyone always asks, and I'm in a private Google Drive with, uh, you know, Arizona doesn't have a ton, but with, you know, pretty much every single team that you could ask for, and usually it's about the full season, uh, so yeah, I apologize that you guys can't get access to this, but uh, this is how I do it, and if there are players, which is rare, but if there are players who are not in the Google Drive that I'm a part of, uh, I do watch the YouTube broadcast angles of the different games, but for a lot of positions, you can't really scout players from broadcast, so uh, I, I prefer the All-22. But I did want to address that in this video, since everyone always asks, and then they don't actually listen to my answer because they skip around, but I've, I've said that a number of times now, so I decided to throw it at the beginning of this mock draft. So, long-winded intro, I'm aware, but please subscribe anyway <laughs> as we try to hit 300k, and I feel like we should make this mock draft a little bit different and let's go under the guys that teams are not going to draft quarterbacks very highly which i think is incorrect but i think we should also experiment with a bunch of different possibilities so that teams are doing things different every time so this one it will be a little bit unusual but that's by design because we're going to experiment you know if the jets don't take a quarterback if maybe the falcons don't take a quarterback maybe the eagles would Panthers, maybe the Lions would. So let's go ahead and figure out how that would play out. Uh, we're going to go Trevor Lawrence, number one, though. I think that makes the most sense. Best player in the draft. Jags need a quarterback. Very good quarterback prospect in Trevor Lawrence. And then the Jets on the board at number two. I pretty much already said I wasn't going to take a QB. So what would I take? Would I go offensive line in Panay Sewell? Would I go uh, receiver? You have some really good options. Even Kyle Pitts, maybe, as an option. But I feel like if you're picking at number two overall in the draft in what is a very, very good receiver class, you probably wait to take receiver or trade down, but we're not going to be trading down in this draft. So we are going to go Panay Sewell, offensive lineman with the highest upside in this draft class, in my opinion. So even if he's not the best day one, he has a very, 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 very high ceiling. So Dolphins on the board at number three. I think they might consider a receiver here. Their offensive line is a little bit better, although not great. You got Austin Jackson, who played okay last year. Robert Hunt could potentially play tackle for you. But the top tackle's off the board. So what do you do now? You probably look to target a receiver. And who is the best player available for the Dolphins here at number three? This is interesting because we've heard, you know, Jamar Chase is receiver one. I think Jalen Waddle is receiver one. Obviously, that's not a surprise. Devontae Smith... Maybe even they would take Kyle Pitts, but I think they have a, a similar type player in Mike Kosicki right now, although probably not the route runner that Kyle Pitts is, but I think we're going to make it a little bit different, and I'm going to go Jalen Waddle. I think I will not be alone in thinking that he's the best receiver in the class, and I think he's probably the best receiver for the Dolphins and for Tua. I think Devontae Parker offers a lot of what Jamar Chase does, even if Jamar Chase could be a top 10, top 20 receiver, when maybe Devontae Parker doesn't have that type of game in him, Jalen Waddle separates at an elite level. And he would really create opportunities for the rest of the Dolphins, who really just could use a true separator. 
Preston Williams is not really a true separator. Devontae Parker is not really a true separator. Jalen Waddell is. You're going to need to play bracket coverage on him because of his speed. And he's not only a deep threat that's going to space the field for the rest of these guys. He's going to give an easy target for Tua Tungavailoa to throw to. It makes the, ease re uh, the reads easier when he's as wide open as he can be. So I'm going to go Jalen Waddell at number three. As a Giants fan who desperately wants Jalen Waddell, I would not want this to happen. But I think it's a legitimate possibility. Falcons at number four. Quarterback seems like a decent bet here. But what do you do? What do you do? We said we're going to mix things up. I've given the Falcons a quarterback so many different times in these mock drafts. So we're not going to go quarterback here. What do we do? You know, this is actually a really interesting pick. Because if they don't take a quarterback, where do the Falcons go? I think you could make a case for Justin Fields. Um, Zach Wilson at quarterback. And that should be highly considered, but outside of QB. Jamar Chase makes sense. Maybe even Devontae Smith because Julio Jones is aging. I love Calvin Ridley, but there's not a whole ton beyond that. At tight end, yeah, they have Hayden Hurst. He's okay, but Kyle Pitts is a versatile weapon at tight end. So maybe you consider taking Kyle Pitts there. And then their defense is really, really weak. And even though you had some good play last year from A.J. Terrell as a rookie, he was great. Cornerback is still a need. And Caleb Farley's available. Patrick Sertan's available. What do you do here if you're the Atlanta Falcons? I think due to the upside and crazy athletic ability of Caleb Farley, I'm going to overdraft Caleb Farley maybe and put him inside the top five. Cornerback is an extremely, extremely valuable position. I haven't seen a lot of Caleb Farley inside the top five, but we are getting crazy in this mock draft for good reason. I'm, I'm getting wild, and we're going to have QBs drop. And... Um, the Falcons take maybe the best corner in the draft. And if you ha have this type of athleticism at cornerback, it's coveted. He has length at the position as well. He has a lot of traits that teams are going to like. I can see Caleb Farley going inside this range. I think the only reason you haven't seen him getting drafted this high is he's never going to go at two. Dolphins are set at corner for right now, but Falcons could take him. Bengals need other positions more, but Farley at four, I think makes sense to me. And then we have the Bengals at number five. And Rashawn Slater is extremely tempting. But Jamar Chase is sitting there. And he has this great chemistry with Joe Burrow. They had an incredible year together. And I am too tempted to just team them back up together. So Jamar Chase going to Cincinnati. Man, this mock draft is already looking ridiculous. And I'm in. Let's get wild. Let's get crazy. It's... March before free agency. We don't know what's going to happen. But we have the Eagles on the board at number six. And I think this is a range where you got to see a QB go. We're going to go Justin Fields. Maybe the second or third or fourth best quarterback in the draft. Quarterback's a very, very tough position to grade. I don't want to give you guys my official rankings at quarterback yet. But I'm pretty much locked in a number one. I'll tell you that. But uh, we got the Detroit Lions now at number seven. And I think this would be extremely tempting for them. And I know they like Goff. They believe in Goff. But guess what? Jared Goff is extremely expensive. And he's not really that good. If you have Zach Wilson sitting on the board here at number seven, I think you take Zach Wilson and you say, okay, that's guaranteed five years with Zach Wilson if we want him. And we can cut Jared Goff after one or two, save a ton of money, and have our QB of the future that doesn't have to start right away. I think that's a major, major, major win-win for the Detroit, uh, Detroit Lions in their rebuild where they can save a ton of money, still have all their draft picks, and their QB of the future. So I love Zach Wilson going to the Detroit Lions, even though, yes, I'm aware the Lions love Goff. They shouldn't as much. Zach Wilson on the board at number seven would be a must pickup in my opinion. Panthers at number eight. Now this is Pitts or Lance, man. Question is, which one do you prefer? Do you like your quarterback of the future that's maybe a little bit raw? Or do you like a major dynamic playmaker and versatile weapon at number eight? I think I think you go and get another big weapon for Teddy Bridgewater right now. Maybe you don't take the shot on Trey Lance. Kyle Pitts is just too good. And he offers a, a really, really big time weapon for, uh, for Teddy Bridgewater. You have Christian McCaffrey coming back. Your receiving core is already pretty good outside of tight end with DJ Moore, with Robbie Anderson, who took a big step up last year. And again, I'm trying to go with this quarterback dropping a little bit thing to mix things up. 
So Kyle Pitts is going to mix things up a lot. Going at number eight to the Carolina Panthers. At number nine, it's probably between uh, two players. Trey Lance, Patrick Sertan. And, I mean, they've been so gung-ho to take quarterback in the past. They really need corner as well. Cut A.J. Bouye, of course, and there needs to be something else. That's out of Michael Ojemudia, who was okay as a rookie last year. But, man, I just think I think Trey Lance is going to be too enticing to pass up. You have just prototypical size and a really, really good arm and overall general great accuracy. So Trey Lance, to me, is certainly worth a top 10 pick, and the Broncos just have to take him. At number 10, that will be Patrick Sertan. Cornerback, super weak position for Dallas. I think that would be an easy pick for them if he's available at 10. And then we get to the Giants at number 11. And this would be a very, very interesting one for the Giants as well with Devontae Smith available, with maybe Micah Parsons available, who you might like quite a bit, Quiddy Pay. Um, I mean, the interior of the offensive line for the Giants is not good either. And they're maybe trying to move Kevin Zeitler. So Elijah Vera Tucker makes some sense too. I mean, there are a lot of enticing options. And it's not like tackle was anything exceptional for the Giants last year. I think Christian Darrisaw or Sean Slater would definitely be considered by Dave Gettleman picking at this range, who loves to take offensive and defensive linemen very high in the draft. And Rashawn Slater is very, very good. And this could just be deemed best player available. Am I picking for me? Or am I picking for the craziness of the mock draft? Or am I picking for Dave Gettleman here, the general manager of the New York Giants? Because the pick becomes very different with what uh, kind of scope I look through. I think the tempting one is just Micah Parsons. I'm not in love with him as a prospect, but in attacking 3-4, I think that's his best fit. Someone that can move all around, play off the ball, and rush the passer on occasion. So I think Micah Parsons playing like a hybrid uh, outside linebacker role could be a really, really good fit for him. The Giants haven't invested in the linebacker position very much at all over the past couple decades. But Micah Parsons might be worth the pick at number 11 if he falls. And then we have the 49ers at number 12. I think I probably have to go Rashawn Slater here. Just best player available at a, a potential position of need if they lose Trent Williams. And even so, if you keep Trent Williams, interior offensive line, I think Rashawn Slater is probably just the best player available. And then Devontae Smith would be super tempting for the Chargers here at number 13. But I think I probably would opt to just protect Justin Herbert instead. And we'll go with Christian Darisaw at number 13. Vikings at 14. I think Devontae Smith would be tempting here as well. A great third option. We've seen teams like the Cowboys triple dip on receivers having Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper they took CeeDee Lamb in the first round because the value was too good to pass up and they saw how good drafting a rookie receiver was for them last year in the first round but also their offensive line is fairly weak and Elijah Vera Tucker sitting there at 14 probably a trade down spot in real life but Elijah Vera Tucker um, is a solid pick at number 14 in my opinion and then the the Patriots at number 15 how do you not go Devontae Smith here? You need a big-time playmaker at receiver, and Devontae Smith is right there. So Devontae to the Patriots, and they get maybe a big-time playmaker at receiver for whoever their quarterback ends up being. I think Mac Jones is certainly an option at that pick as well. Cardinals at number 16. Uh, I'm tempted to go Najee Harris here, Travis Etienne, J.C. Horn as well. Uh, it depends on what happens with Kenyon Drake. The versatility of Najee Harris coming out of the backfield, I think, would be super, super tempting. I'm really tempted to do that. But they're losing Pat Pete, man. We got to go cornerback here for Arizona. Um, you got to get a big time number one caliber corner. And JC Horn can be that. Raiders at 17. I am going with Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. He is the exact type of player that the Raiders need in their defense. They need linebackers that can cover, fits the scheme, and Wusu Koromoa is a hybrid safety, which is a weak position for the Raiders already. So you can kind of play him in a number of different areas. Even play him as like your, I don't want to call it a slot corner, but as your overhang defender, just cut LaMarcus Joyner today. So Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, I think, is a match made in heaven there. And then we have the Dolphins at 18. I still think running back makes a lot of sense here, but... 
Sam Cosme lasting at 18, and, and even not even just Sam Cosme. You get Tevin Jenkins that can play right tackle for you, give you your blindside protector for Tua Tungavailoa. I think that'd be very intriguing. Bunch of solid offensive linemen still available. What do you do here if you were the Miami Dolphins? Number of different good options. I still like Zayvon Collins for them too, especially after cutting Kyle Van Noy. I think Zayvon Collins is a natural fill-in. So, ah, their defense was good last year, man. I think you have to uh, prioritize protecting Tua Tunga by low. We're getting a blindside protector, of course, with Tua being a left-handed quarterback. Just plug and play right tackle. Tevin Jenkins inside the top 20. With football team at 19, I'm going quarterback. Matt Jones to football team. They get their quarterback of the future, who is apparently an amazing leader that a lot of guys look up to. So Mac Jones going to Washington football team to be their leader. And then we have the Chicago Bears at number 20. And this could be any one of a bunch of different options. The offensive linemen are tempting for sure. I think receivers are going to be incredibly tempting as well. I like Rashad Bateman. I think this is just great value for him. Easy Allen Robinson replacement. Obviously, will probably not be as good as Allen Robinson year one or probably even year two or maybe even in his career. Allen Robinson's really, really good. But he's a similar type of player to Allen Robinson and the Bears would need receiver help. Colts at 21, if they stay at this pick, it has to be offensive line all day. We will go Sam Cosme at this point. Titans at 22. Now, I haven't been sold on Jalen Phillips to them for a while just because I think he's a more a true 4-3 edge. But, I mean, they play Harold Landry at 3-4 outside linebacker. They've been successful in that. I just don't think Jalen Phillips is an amazing scheme fit, but if he's rushing the passer every play, it really won't matter too much. I think the issue would arise when he's doing other things. But I just think a really, really good fit for them is Aziz Ojolari. Fits the 3-4 super, super well. And uh, could be edge one in the class. I don't agree with that, but I could see the opinion. Jets at 23. This is best player available. We're going receiver, and we're going with a dynamic playmaker in Kadarius Toney to the Jets. Really, really good player. Uh, another easy separator. Someone that's going to create a lot of space for whoever their quarterback is. Sam Darnold, in this case, with Panay Sewell. And then we have the Steelers at 24. I am going to give them Najee Harris. Steelers fans are convinced they need a running back. I think this probably should be an offensive lineman. And Jalen Mayfield would be such a good scheme fit, but I've already clicked the button for Najee Harris. So I think they should definitely take offensive line here. Marquise Pouncey uh, retired. You might lose Alejandro Villanueva in free agency. But Najee Harris is a great running back. So there he is at 24. Jags at 25, picking for the second time in the draft. Took Trevor Lawrence earlier. You might lose Cam Robinson to free agency. But for a team like the Jags, this just should be the best player available. And their defensive line was super, super weak last year. So Christian Barmore makes sense. I think Jalen Phillips makes a ton of sense. Um, and I know they drafted Caleb on Chase on, but Phillips is a really, really good edge rusher, uh, as is Quiddy Pay. Another team that has some super athletic edge rushers already. Um, so maybe we'll pass on that and see if they can develop Caleb on Chase on a little bit more. So maybe they just take potentially the best safety in the draft. I like Richie Grant a lot. People have been asking me about Javon Holland. I like him a lot too. I think he has nickel corner flexibility. I love Javon Holland. His hype, di uh, hype died down because he didn't play last year. Trayvon Merrick also can play over the top. That makes a lot of sense to me. I just think Richie Grant is so good. I think he's not getting talked about enough. And he has nickel corner flexibility. Keeping him in state. Richie Grant going to travel up north to Jacksonville from Central Florida as we get to the Browns at number 26. And I love the Jalen Phillips fit for them. He has concussion issues. He could be an injury away from his career being over uh, with you know these concussion problems, but he's also so, 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 so good. I think he's the best edge rusher in the class. He could get brought down because of injury concerns, but he's really, really good. And after that, Receiver should definitely be in high consideration for the Ravens here at 27, but it's a really good class. And Quiddy Pay somehow fell to number 27, so I'm going Quiddy Pay at 27 to the Ravens. Number 28, we have the New Orleans Saints. This could just be a best player available type situation. And what do you do here if, if you're the Saints? Well, apparently, Jason Owe just ran 
4.38 via laser time. I don't know, these 40 times I'm hearing have been crazy. I don't really believe them, and I don't really care. But OA is someone that plays really fast on tape, even if the sack numbers didn't show. The pressure numbers were there. Uh, OA is certainly really good. Add potential position of need. Add potential position of need with Trey Hendrickson testing free agency. Likely. What do you do here if you're the Saints? I'm tempted to go corner as well. I really am, but linebacker is such a big position of need. And Zayvon Collins, versatile guy that can do a lot of different things for you. I like Zayvon Collins in round one. Packers at 29. Ricky Wagner was cut, so right tackle is a big, big need. I get that. I still think receiver's a big need, and I love the receivers a lot. Dwayne Eskridge, I love a ton. I think he's really, really good. Elijah Moore is really good. Rondell Moore, I have concerns with as a receiver, but is a, a huge threat anytime he touches the football. Terrace Marshall is really solid as well, but I've been talking about it so much. I think corner is such a huge need for this team. I've been high on Eric Stokes for a while, and we're going to have him go in round one there to the Packers 29. Bills at number 30. Potentially losing Matt Milano, Daryl Williams. Not really much there on the edge anyway. Not really much at boundary cornerback. Another situation of maybe the best player available. Nick Bolton's probably super tempting at this spot. I am going to go Greg Rousseau. If you saw my video on him, I have my concerns. But he could be a versatile player on their defensive line. Uh, they took one last year in AJ Epineza. Rousseau is probably a little bit better than AJ Epineza was last year. He just is super raw. But for a team like the Bills that plans on competing for a while with Josh Allen, a quarterback, you can afford to take a developmental guy at the back end of the first round and just take a shot. Maybe it pays off. So I think that's a good pick for the Buffalo Bills. Chiefs at 31. Could just be best player available. And receiver, I think, is a super big need. I think Terrace Marshall just fits. Big-bodied receiver that complements who they already have there in Tyreek Hill and Mecole Hardman. You're probably going to lose Sammy Watkins to Marcus Robinson. Terrace Marshall is just a natural replacement to keep this offense up. Interior offensive line is a big need as well, but I think Terrace Marshall just fits them really well. And then to the Buccaneers at 32. Obviously just won the Super Bowl. Receiver is in play with Chris Godwin maybe being a free agent, right? But another team that just could take the best player available. At a position of need, I think their offense is real solid. Shaq Barrett, free agent as well. So maybe we just go with an edge rusher and we'll ride the hot hand of someone that ran 4-3-8 today, apparently, uh, off the edge in Jason Oway out of Penn State. And he fits the scheme really well. Could be a natural Shaq Barrett replacement. JPP is not getting any younger either way. So that is my crazy mock draft. We definitely took some liberties, but that's part of the fun. I want to give you a mock draft that... I think is possible that you haven't seen before. And no one's picked these 32 <laughs> uh, in the first round. I can guarantee you that. But it was interesting. It was fun. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. More draft con uh, content on the way. I got to finalize quarterbacks. That video should be out before the end of the week. Top 10 quarterbacks in the 2021 NFL draft. So subscribe for that. And then we're going to do running backs, receivers, tight ends. Offensive line is not my strong suit, but I'm going to try to do offensive line as well. Talking to guys that know a lot more about their position than me. And then we'll get to edge, IDL, linebacker, cornerback, safety. Probably going to skip out on kicker and punter this year, but that's going to do it for me, guys. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, following me on Twitter and Twitch. I stream about every night now, twitch.tv slash bangle. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.